Welcome back to a door cream. Okay, this is my final 1999 video, and today we're going to talk about some outtakes and some of the songs that did not make the cut on this very high quality album. I'm not going to mention every song, but I'll mention four or five which I just consider to be absolutely crucial. Now, again, Fair Use um, Code 107, Fair Use 17. This video is not for tribute or commercial purposes. It's strictly for tribute purposes only, um, and I make no financial gain from any of my videos. So, record companies, please lay off. Okay, I originally did this video on Monday when I did the one about In Love, but I was so unhappy with the quality of it, I deleted it straight away, and this is a redone version. Now, for the first part, I'm just going to talk about some songs which are really high quality. All of them, except one of them, is an outtake, basically. The last song, Moonbeam Levels, was actually released on Forever in 2016. Now, these songs, they are all basically unreleased, so I mean, you can only really hear about them in the bootleg community, so I'm not advocating bootlegs, but I'm just saying these songs are out there. I mean, if the record company ever wants to release them, I think they should because these songs are absolute genius. Now, the second part of this video, I'm just briefly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to steal a bit off on Prince's friend here. He rated his five top songs on For You. I'm going to rate all the songs on 1999 from my least favourite. I won't say worst because there are no worst songs on an album like 1999 down to my favourite song. Okay, but first we'll start with the songs. Now, probably the first and most important song which I absolutely love that was an outtake from 1999 is Purple Music, this thing here. That was recorded sometime in the middle of 1982. Um, it's got the Lynn drum running through it. It's got amazing lyrics, anti-drug lyrics, but at the same time, I mean, music is like Prince's drug. It keeps them going, basically. It's a really good song. I consider it one of the finest. I mean, probably the reason it didn't make it onto 1999 is it is a very long dance groove, 11 minutes long. Um, basically, the lyrics are about, you know, making a purple sacrifice, you know, getting high, respecting the colour purple, getting high through music, I mean, and it's just... I just think it's a brilliant song. I mean, if you haven't heard the song, you need to hear it. It's just that good. Now, Warner Brothers, Prince of State, Sony Music, if you're out there, release this song. Because I'm telling you what, it might not get too many new fans, but every fan, hardcore Prince fan, is going to run out and buy it, basically. It's just a great song. Now, the next song, um, next two songs I'm going to talk about, there's a good reason why these two songs did not make it onto 1999. Even though 1999 is a really sexual album, as we all know, these songs really just go beyond belief. The first one's called Lust You Always, and this one emerged about five or six years ago. It's got a great snare drum opening. These lyrics here are probably why it didn't get on the run. Great soul screams, a very good rap in the middle. It's about how you know my analyst had told me that I'd get over you, but the strange feeling is that she wants to do you too. Great lyrics. Um, he talks about his first third grade teacher was Joni. You know, he had to get her pantalones, you know, all this type of stuff. It's just hilarious. But it includes the line going, My body reeks with lust, I will rape you if I must. There now there is no way in how a lyric like that would ever get onto a Prince album of any description from any era. But anyway, so that's the reason why I didn't make it. Lust Your Ways is very funky. He's singing in a mixture of his higher voice and um, falsetto. Amazing, you know, snare running through it. You can hear some very good guitar coming through. And there's not too much guitar on 1999 when you think about it. It's a lot more of an electric album. But it's a good it's a good song, but it is just a wee bit over the top with the sex. Next, also, we've got this song, Extra Lovable. Again, for the same reasons. Basically, again, there's a lot of singing about raping people and, um, you know, dragging someone into the bath. Or am I, are you going to get in the bath or I'm going to have to drag you? I think I'm going to have to rape you now. I can be very cruel, basically. You know, these are pretty violent lyrics, but here's Extra Lovable for you. Again, great limb drum beat. Synth claps. And then Prince goes, can I rap a little bit? And then it ends into a chant about the purple politicians ranting. It's a really funky song, but it includes such lines as, you know, I mean, you know, 
But the funniest line in this song is the part where um, Prince goes, What's the matter, Des? Don't you like my band? Which is referring to the fact he was getting a bit tired of um, Des preaching about how much he loved God and how all the songs like Head and um, Let's Pretend We're Married were sinful. So that's another absolutely essential song. What's not essential is absolutely boring as hell 2011 um, remake of it, which omits all the lines about raping people. Okay, we're going to move away from songs about raping people to Moonbeam Levels, which is by far the most well-known of all the 1982-era outtakes. This song is magnificent. It basically was supplanted by Free on the album, and here we are. Just that opening is epic, I think. A snare, followed by a Lynn beat. Some synth claps. Prince singing in the sort of Ario Speedwagon type voice. Ooh, 16 seconds, but be careful, the record coming come after me. Get some chord. Wonderful thing, yes. Yep, that was a bootleg album. Yeah, okay, so that's a wonderful song. It's basically about nuclear destruction again. Moonbeam levels are kind of like, you know, levels of radiation and aerial pollution. Prince is singing in a really sort of emotive voice. It's a very powerful song. It's an excellent song, and basically, the version you hear on Forever is basically the bootleg mix. I know why, because that's the same song, and that's actually a bootleg I'm playing. I've actually got about three or four bootlegs that have that song on it. This one's called Prince's Eye Vault 1982, which has been released various times as, um, you know, Prince's work, Prince's The Vault, and sort of um, what, Testament and everything else. But Okay, I'm just going to quickly play some other songs. These are still good, but not quite as essential. Okay, this was an outtake for the Jill Jones era, and I mean, okay, this one is essential. This is this one here. Great scream. Now that's how you scream in a song. I mean, but... It, was probably, it didn't really fit the theme of 1999, it really was a song for another artist, but I think that is magnificent, and one, one thing the original's album misses out is they didn't put that on, that needs to go on an album, I don't care if it's bootleg or I'm going to get taken down or what, that song needs to come out basically, you can't keep that thing locked up forever, then we've got Dance to the Beat, which is actually a sort of Morris Day Prince time up, this is a really funky catchy number, and I think this might have missed the time album, this sounds kind of live and muddy, and here's sort of like the um, horny toad coat of there. And then we've got Strange Way of Saying I Love You. This is another song we like. And then of course The Second Coming, which dates from late 81, but this is a great gospel thing. Very gospelly. This is a live version from a controversy era. Con so another really great song. So you just see there's just so many great songs from this era. And I've just played a few there for you. Hopefully they won't get taken down. But I know a lot of the other Prince commentators are playing snippets of songs in their videos now. So hopefully it passed muster. Basically these are essential songs. If anything, they just testify to Prince's level of genius at this time. I mean, all this amazing music was just pouring out of him. You think of the songs on 1999, everything he wrote for Vanity Six and The Time, the Jill Jones tracks like you heard Baby, You're a Trip. I mean, Prince was just pulling out screams like that in his sleep because you think he also does the scream on Free, he does the scream on International Lover. And of course, as you know, as we move into the Purple Rain era, the screams get even better, you know, like the scream on Electric and the course. I mean... I just about bloody die when I hear that scream. We're talking about the live one. And then, um, of course, the beautiful ones, Prince does another amazing scream. Prince's friend did a really good series of videos about Prince's best screams, and he pretty much nailed it. I mean, the only screams he really missed out were the bootleg screams, but still, he nailed it. But anyway, so that's um, the extra tracks. There are a lot of them, okay? Just before I get into that countdown, which you want to hear about, I just want to quickly talk about what I'm doing next. Um, gems are going to keep coming. I'm going to keep issuing out controversial songs. The next one... I might do it late this week or early next week. It's going to be really controversial because this song, I love it, but I know a lot of people really just cannot stand this song. 
So bear with me. I mean, I feel courageous now because I'm up to 180 something subscribers. I mean, that's amazing, 180 subscribers. And um, the other thing I can't believe too is I looked at the um, Love Sexy video that went viral at the start of the year. Um, it's up to eight and a half thousand views. Even though I'm not really celebrating because basically you can actually get into a screen which tells you like you know how long people are watching your videos for. And pretty much something like 99% of them are switching off within the first 30 seconds. So they're like watching like, oh, I made a return, go into another video. Who's this guy? Blah. You know. And, um, okay, so we're going to wind up 1999. I never said this. I did rate songs on the review video. But I'm going to rank the songs from best, I mean worst to best, okay. First of all, the songs that got 11th and 10th, they are not worst songs. They're not bad songs. They're just my least favorite songs on the album. The, but, I mean, the bar for 1999 is set so high. I mean, something has to sit at the bottom, and it's sad to say that, but the song that came in in 11th place, I'd easily give it an 8 out of 10. It's a great song. You know, I mean, it's not DMSR or Little Red Corvette, but it's still a magnificent song. And that song is All the Critics Love You in New York. Okay, 10th place song is... Oh, I'm trying to remember. I memorized the first six. I haven't really memorized the bottom song, so it is um, Lady Cab Driver. I mean, like I said, I mean, the sex does put me off, but I mean, all the some violence against women. I mean, I know I've just discussed songs that sing about raping people. I mean, I don't think rape is funny. I think it's sickening. I think any song that exploits a woman or basically refers to them as objects, and that's one side of Prince I really didn't like, was the way he treated women. I mean, people might say, oh, I treated them fine. I mean, like, Prince of Supreme brought it up. Well, I mean, he mentioned that If I Was Your Girlfriend is not a love song. It's a control song, basically. He's basically trying to control her mind. He's basically saying... If some if, if I was your one and only friend, would some would you run to me if somebody hurt you even if that somebody was me? I mean that's called mind fuckery in my book, basically. And then um and all oh, again while we're talking about bootlegs, there's a song out there called Big Tall Wall. I actually played pieces of it in my um, video where I'm talking about building that purple wall behind me, basically. It's actually about more of the same, basically. It's about Prince puts um Susanna Malvoin into this like tower building. She stays here, Prince goes out and philanders all he wants, but she has to remain loyal to him and that's it, basically. Charming fellow, you know. I love the man, love the music, I do not love his rampant sexism, basically. I mean, after all, this is the type of stuff we're dealing with here, Prince leading women around. And this book, I love it. Um, you know, buy it if you can. You know, I mean, even if you don't live in America, like I don't import the damn thing. Fish Pond in Australia New Zealand does not charge shipping. Buy it, it's essential. I mean, I just love these pictures, you know, I mean, when I got the book, I just fell in love again, basically. I wish I bought it three months earlier, because then I'd have a bit more um, visuals on 1999, rather than showing you those same pictures out of the Mabin Asbar one all the time. Everything is in here, basically, and um, even the record company might lay off, because they see I've actually paid official money. I mean, these photos of Prince of Vanity are classic, um, especially this one, because you can see Prince is smiling there. I think it's a wonderful photo. Okay, and now I'll stop getting distracted. This one of Morris Day is hilarious, though, I think, you know, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough before I get taken down. Um, okay, song number nine is Something in the Water Does Not Compute. Okay, it's still 8 out of 10 song. It's a good song. It's just not as strong as the others on the album. The eighth best song on the album, and this is really horrible to say, it's because I really love the song. Delirious. I mean, I know how much I love it. It's a catchy Jingle, we know it's a great song, great single. It's just, like I said, 1999 is just such a strong album. There's just so many good songs on this album. The seventh song is, and this is even worse to say this because I absolutely love this song as well, and that's Let's Pretend We're Married. I mean, it's a great song. I love the rap in it. The sixth best song is, oh man, I'm trying to, I'm actually getting mixed up here. The sixth best song is Automatic. I mean, I love Automatic too. I mean, I just love the beat. The video is absolutely hilarious. The fifth best song is Free. I mean, Free, I think, is a really good song. I mean, I know people go, oh, Moonbeam Levels is better. I push Moonbeam Levels off the album. The fourth best song is International Lover, which is another absolutely fantastic song. The third best song, okay, the three top songs basically would be in probably my top 20 Prince songs of all time. 1999, I know it's hard to say because 1999, I mean, it's one of the most classic Prince songs ever played. It's just absolutely incredible. You know, I mean, everything I love about it, I mean, I always talk about, you know, how the Purple Rain songs are so overexposed, and I mean, singles even like Raspberry Beret, Kiss, You Got the Look, Bat Dance and Cream, they're played to death all the time, but I can never say that about 1999 Little Red Corvette, I can never get sick of those songs. Oh, maybe not When Doves Cry, but When Doves Cry is such a strong song, I mean, I don't get sick of that one, but when they play Let's Go Crazy, or Purple Rain, or Raspberry Beret for the 90th time, I'm like, yeah, boring, you know, so, um, 
third place, 1999. Okay, second place, Little Red Corvette. I know people say, oh, it should be first. I mean, it is a pop song. It's very good. Very, very strong lyrics. I love the beat. I love the coda. I love the melody. But the absolute best song on, D on 1999 is, no surprise, you probably all expected this, Dance Music Sex Romance. I mean, it's just so catchy. It's got great lyrics. It's absolutely hilarious in its scope. I mean, Prince is teaching white people and even black people how to dance and clap on the beat. It's funky. He's, again, it's a manifesto song, like Uptown Prince is basically summing up what he likes to do for fun. That's basically to dance, make make music sex romance, you know. I mean, it's very, it's got that great chant. It's very memorable. It's an earworm. It's a song that sticks in your mind. Even now, I can imagine back in 82, 83, when DJs put it on some dance club, I mean, it would just bring everybody out onto the dance floor. But even now, I'm sure if you went into a nightclub, you put on DMSR, I mean, people just move into the floor and start dancing to it. It's that great a song, basically. So that's the 1999 project. I'm glad to have concluded. I mean, it's been nearly three months since I started talking about my plans for 1982. Now, quickly, Purple Rain era is next one I'm moving to. I'm not going to do millions of videos on this because for the simple reason there is so much out there about Purple Rain. The estate loves releasing albums around it. Um, also, there's at least two really good books about it, including um, the one by um, Alan Light, um, the one about Purple Rain. And there's also, um, of course, Dwayne Turtle's um, amazing 1983-84 studio sessions. Virtually every book about Prince has got a section about Purple Rain. So I'm just going to do two or three videos. I think already what I'm going to do. I'm going to review the third time album because I love it. I think it's a great record. And then I'm going to review Purple Rain, the album itself. I'm not going to review um, Deluxe because I did that when it came out two years ago. And finally, I'm going to do a video about the movie. And I might just do another summing up video, which might, you know, talk about the singles on the chart. Then I'm going to move into um, basically around the world in a day. And then I'm going to basically um, stop the whole classics section. The, oh, I might do the family as well. Yeah, then the classics will end. Those will be like the early ones. Those will just be one video. They will not be nine or ten videos. I decided to do so many on 1999 because it's, first of all, it's a magnificent album. It's my second favourite after Sign. And um, I think the album needs to have justice done to it. Not too many people talk about 1999 beyond reviews of it. It's a period that really needs more study. I mean, Dwayne Turtle said he's doing 85, 86, and 87, 88. I'm really hoping he'll go back and do 81 and 82. Because those are important years, basically. Or you could even throw in 1980. So just a really good one catch-all book that just covers the 1980 to 82 period well. Okay, I know we've got this, but this is mostly photos. There's not too many essays about Prince making the music and Prince touring things, but the photo record has been covered now. Thank you very much, Alan Bolio. Basically, we have got a photo record of that golden 80 to 82 period, and I wouldn't be surprised if I heard rumours this picture here. I mean, come on, isn't that just magnificent? Darkness and light, it sums it up so well. Um, if I've heard he might be doing a companion volume going from 83 through to about 86, so you might get all the Purple Rain era stuff. Okay, so thank you for watching my videos, and may you all live to see the dawn.